GameStop used to actually be a really fun place to visit. I used to love going to GameStop, looking at all the promotional displays, whatever the new games were, looking through all the old pre-owned games, and like all the other people in there also shopping for games. Like it used to actually be a really fun atmosphere and a really cool place to visit. Of course, GameStop has gone just downhill over the years. I personally have not shopped at a GameStop in several years. And the reason why I don't visit GameStop anymore isn't because of digital downloads. Like, I actually prefer physical games. I collect physical games. I don't want digital games to replace physical media by any means because I just like having the physical game. I think it's cooler. I think it's awesome to go to video game shops and have that whole experience. There are so many other reasons why GameStop has just kind of gone downhill. Like, they're old business model doesn't exist anymore. It, times have changed to where they are kind of struggling and have been struggling for many years. So this video, I kind of want to talk about a little bit of the financial stuff, not really too much in the financials because I feel like in a way it's a little boring and I'm sure everyone already knows about the financial stuff of GameStop. You know, they used to have, I think, over 7,000 stores globally i think that was about the number and now they've dwindled down and they've been shutting down many game stops i personally know several locations that have shut down and don't exist anymore there is still a GameStop right down the street for me. I've been there once, and last time I bought a game there, I bought a pre-owned Destiny for the Xbox 360 there years and years ago. I brought it home. It didn't work immediately. I didn't do anything to the disc. I brought it back 30 minutes later, and they would not give me a refund, and they said, you know, too bad. So ever since then, I personally have not shopped with GameStop. Quick little history of GameStop. So originally, it was called Babbage's in 1984. It has slowly turned into a video game shop, and then it merged with another company called Software ETC, etc whatever then in 1999 barnes and noble actually purchased babbage's then eventually it was turned into gamestop and they just dominated the video game market in the 2000s they grew rapidly like they were just popping up everywhere starting to go to different countries and all that like gamestops were everywhere i would always buy the pre-owned games personally because you know brand new games are expensive they still are expensive but i would always get the pre-owned games i remember looking through like all the shelves all the shelves are just so cool seeing all the games out there all the promotional displays the kiosks, you know, like the Xbox 360 kiosks, the PlayStation kiosks, whatever, the Nintendo kiosks. I miss kiosks and I wish they were more prevalent in today's video game society. I know they still exist with like the Switch. I don't think Xbox and PlayStation have any kiosks anymore. I'm pretty sure they did for the Xbox One and PS4 though, but I, I don't think I've ever seen an Xbox Series X or S or PS5 kiosk. I, I've seen the Nintendo Switch ones, of course, at Target and they have a GameStop one as well. I think it would be so cool to own a kiosk. A lot of people somehow get them and they have them in their personal collections and I would love to have that happen to me, but you know, I know that they're like thousands of dollars, so probably would never happen. But it's just like so many nostalgic memories of looking through the shelves and looking through like every video game there because when I was a kid, I went there not really knowing what I wanted most of the time. It was like, you know, special occasion. Mom was like, hey, let's go get you a video game, whatever. I didn't know what I want unless there was a specific new release, like the new Call of Duties. I always wanted the new Call of Duties and I always wanted the new Pokemon games. I, those are like the only two games that I could really remember me ever probably asking for or like specifically wanting to go to the store for. So like it was just cool to see all the physical media there and I never actually grew up with PlayStation. I grew up with Xbox and Nintendo. So I never had PlayStation. So I was always fascinated with like the PlayStation section, seeing all the PlayStation games, the exclusives, and the kiosk, of course, of the PlayStation. Probably the PS3 at the time would probably be the console I would I was always looking at. But it's just like, it was a cool and good atmosphere. I remember the employees used to be really nice, which in my opinion, now the employees are kind of a little rude nowadays at GameStop. I don't know what it is. Every, every time I've gone to a GameStop in the last like five years, I've had a rude employee. I, I don't know why. But this was before the online markets existed, like digital downloads for video games. And that's definitely one of the biggest reasons like why GameStop has been going downhill because there are a ton of people out there that actually prefer digital only games. So they just have the game on their console, which like I said earlier, I prefer physical. I think physical is better because first of all, you're holding something that has a value. I know a lot of games go down in value, like Call of Duty, after owning it for a year, it tanks in value. You know, FIFA, any sports game, they tank after a year. But there are a lot of games that also retain value. Specifically, it's mostly like the older games, like GameCube games, DS, 3DS games. Like those games, if you're gonna buy them, 
pre-owned, they're going to hold their value pretty well. But personally, I just think it's more fun to have a physical game and you just plug it into your console. Now, granted, I hate that if you put a physical game into an Xbox or PlayStation now, you have to like download the game and you can't just hop on it immediately. Whereas if you do have the digital game, you could just hop on it right away. That's the only benefit in my opinion. But with digital games, you can't sell it if you hate it. I mean, you can like kind of return it, I think within a certain amount of time with, with your purchase. If you don't like the game, then you can return it digitally. But after like a year, you, you're stuck with the game forever. Later on, they purchased EB Games for about $1.4 billion trying to expand the company. They expanded the company like crazy. They also bought like other companies, which I'm not really going to get into too far in this video. I don't really want to talk too much about the like stuff that they purchased, but they bought company after company trying to grow the business, but they just kept making poor business decisions. They had about 7,000 stores worldwide, but they just were not prepared for the digital sales. Every single console has their digital digital market now. PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, which means, you know, people don't have to go to GameStop anymore. They could buy their games if a brand new game is coming out, buy it midnight digitally, or you can even buy it ahead of time, have it pre-downloaded. Once midnight hits, you could play the game immediately. So, and apparently in 2023, the digital video game sales made about 95% of the entire video game revenue for the year, which is bizarre to me. I can't believe that this is a true fact. It was about $174.5 billion, which I think is crazy. Are that many people really not buying new physical video games? And if that is the case, will like modern day video games actually be kind of valuable in the future? Who knows? But yeah, they just kind of overall just kept making poor investments into other companies. Don't get me wrong, they're still a huge company. Like there are still a lot of GameStops around. People still shop with them. GameStop also does have their own online website now where they do sell video games, which I think that they have started to get into retro gaming, which is my one of my points here. If they just kind of switch their business model, they have too many collectibles in the store now, in my opinion. They have like too many like plush Funko Pops, random collectible stuff in the store. And they of course still have video games in stores, but I think they need to get rid of a lot of these like random figures and stuff, which I like figures and everything, but I think they have too many in the stores. I think they need to focus more on bringing in the retro video games such as like NES, SNES, N64, you know, PS1, Xbox, the original, put it in the physical stores. Cause I'm pretty sure they only sell the retro gaming stuff online. I don't think they bring it in stores, but even with that being said, they have kind of a history of buying reproduction or counterfeit video games. So like, for example, if I were to buy Pokemon, for example, if I were to buy Pokemon Black and White or Pokemon Red or whatever, for example, on their website, there's a chance that it actually could be a counterfeit game and they're still going to sell it to me full price as in say it's like a legit copy, of course. And they also have an issue of not giving you your complete in box video game. So sometimes you'll buy a game, you'll think it's complete in box. And you get it in the mail and it's a reproduction cover art and a replacement case and it's not the complete in box and you're but you're paying for a complete in box so like there are still issues with gamestop like they still are kind of a little sketchy in my opinion and of course they also have the stigma of not paying a lot for your video games which is true but there are some exceptions there are some video games that they actually pay a lot for, for whatever reason. They have like an online website where you can actually see how much you would get for trading credit for some specific video games. Like I remember I traded in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and they gave me $14 for it, which I thought was really good. Because at that time that game was selling online for like six bucks. For whatever reason, they were buying it for $14. So I don't know. I don't see GameStop going out of business anytime soon necessarily. I don't also see them growing exponentially anytime soon. But I think because of the rise of popularity of privately owned, you know, like video game shops such as, you know, like whatever your local video game shop is, that's not GameStop. Like someone that owns their own video game shop. Like somebody that's a great example is Retro Rick. You've probably heard of him. Maybe he, he has a game store, which is a crazy cool game store, by the way. I think his game store is incredible. His game store, he is making it number one priority to be a fun place to visit like a place that you'd want to visit all the nostalgia just everything you would want when you go to a video game store bright colors cool displays here and there different types of merchandise but still mainly just video games i think gamestop is going to try to copy that more and more over the years i think they're going to try to scale down a little bit and try to just be like your local video game store and i think that would benefit them in the best way possible they need to pay more for video games of course which i don't really know what their current state of paying for video games is i think they should also keep their online store as long as their prices are competitive and they're fair of course i don't think they should overcharge or anything like that 
I think they need to bring more retro games into the physical stores. And I know this is weird to become like that GameStop would be just like only pre-owned games, which they should still do new games, but the profit margins on buying brand new video games for stores is super low. Like I'm pretty sure you pay like 90% of whatever the value of that game is. So like if you're buying, if you're a video game store and you're buying a new Switch game that's 60 bucks, I'm pretty sure you're paying like 50 or $55. So when you sell an item like that, you're only making like $3. And that doesn't include like the cost of time to price everything and put on the shelves. So that's why GameStop needs to have pre-owned items in the store. They have to rely on decades of video games to bring into the store. And I think that would be great as well because retro games have skyrocketed in popularity and in value over the last couple of years. If they just do that and build like a more loyal fan base or customer base again, which they did have in the 2000s. And as we all know, a lot of people don't like to go to GameStop anymore just because of the reputation they have built for themselves is just not what it used to be. They've completely changed since they were in the early to mid or late 2000s. Like even like 2014, I think they were still, you know, pretty good. It was just an experience to go there. And that's where Retro Rick's store comes in. His store is an experience to visit, as well as a lot of small, individually, like family owned video game stores is they focus on the customers and not so much on being a huge corporation and a huge business, which unfortunately is where a lot of companies get lost. You know, they get lost in the sauce. You know what I'm saying? GameStop grew too big, too quickly in my opinion. They tried to keep pushing it and they just failed, unfortunately, and lost a lot of money, lost a lot of stores and everything, but they just need to scale down and focus on the customers a little bit. Make every single store an experience, as well as get like professionals that could tell what a fake video game is and decline a fake video game, you know what I mean? No fake video games, no counterfeits, and if it's gonna be like a reproduction cover or like replacement case, let that be stated, you know what I'm saying? But let me know what you think about GameStop. I'm really curious to hear what your thoughts are about GameStop, like what you think they could do to be better, how you think they could improve, and maybe even a cool story about GameStop. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.